All right, hello everybody, it's SCD Matt Haven here today. I got two matches that I want to show off. I'm not going to be really showing off any of the main gameplay, but showing off the strategies that were included. I uh, actually, I think it was General that I was playing with in both these matches. Yeah, Blade got hit hard. Blade's back on the game, by the way, that's super nice. Yeah, and then, oh, you were in this one, in the Minotaro. So you know exactly which match yeah. this is. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit the watch replay and check this out. So what I really want to do is just go over like how we should do placement better on Sand River. All right, we can go ahead and skip, break up. Blade's going to do the rush in the top section. I actually kind of do want to see what Blade does in the top. Blade's all alone. Yeah, I remember this map. I was very irritated because our teammate uh, dropped down from that hill and allowed their team to just flank around me. About three of them came around and... Yeah, so here, I'm going to zoom out real fast, and then I want to line up on this a tad bit. So we're going to pause. Let's bring up the map. So whenever it comes down to um, Sand River... Actually, I'm going to do something real quick. That took a second. That was a bit glitchy. So on this map, this is the hill on the inside, and this is a kind of a crossfire section. Like, this is a dead zone coming in. Like, this is where you can get caught out by anyone located inside this section. Um, so, one thing that I don't like about this is how you got to do speed into the top, maintain the back section. Um, let's go ahead and actually exit the map. All right, so what we should have done with the Minotauro is probably had you play the back section here starting off. And then once we crossed here and tip control, then they have you pull into about here. That way you could play and then kind of put shots down range, and I could have defended right here. Um, but that didn't happen. I got switched around a little bit. Just because of the way everything was playing out. We'll go ahead and just hit play and let it go. I'm also going to drop the game audio. Was that a Udez that was up here? Uh, yeah. All right, so that was Udez. And then I, it was, it's kind of funny because Blades are like, I don't see anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we're all like, oh, okay, yeah, so we're, we should be okay to pull in, you know, because we thought this entire yeah. side was empty. The moment I pull the corner, it's immediate like, oh, there's four guys here. Put one shell into the Highlander. It's an M103, and then you're pulling up right next to me. See, and then right here, um, what we should have did instead, but it's kind of hard to really, you know, go over this and everything else, is rather than having you pull up with me, which, I mean, in this scenario, I guess it's all right, but you should have held, like, right here. Should have came up and stopped right there so you could get eyes on down this back section. Yeah. And then... It would have been better because then I would have been stuck out. But then again, it's like doing it this way. We're kind of both taking damage. So we're not bleeding as much. We're kind of bleeding equally. Uh, but yeah, that was uncomfortable. And then I immediately reacted to that. Me. Yeah, like the first shell they're sending out was straight to you. But my now, I'm going to go ahead and skip a little bit here. Maybe back a few seconds. This is this was a complete crap show right here. Because mm -hmm. I'm backing off. I'm backing up all the time. And this is actually one of the better positions to back into. Just because once you get right here, you got a little bit of a haul down position right there. And then you can kind of drive down and peek out to be able to get shots ridden right here. So this back line position is a lot better right about there. Now... Top's getting hit hard. Blade's clearly dead. Blade died a while ago. Sharpshooter. Uh, what is that? IS-32? Yeah, the tier 9 yeah. double barrel. Yeah, that's the guy who left me stranded. And then, <laughs> yeah. Highlander, 257. 705. Is it 705A or just 705? 705A. Did, oh, yeah, that's right. He rushes us, too. Where was the um, the tank destroyer? Oh, they're both on the inside. There's five tanks here. There's five on the three of us. Or the four of yep. us. 
the 705 and the tank destroyer rush me about right now. Yeah, and I was trying to make up my mind in which side I wanted to hit. Like, if I wanted to go up higher, if I wanted to stay down low. In and in the moment, the moment that tank destroyer got spotted, my first reaction was to start putting shells down. All right, so right here... You made a really good choice to pull into that hull down position. This is going on. The Udes is coming out. Beautiful shot. That interclip reload that they did to the Minotaur, that half second, that was like one of the most useless things I've ever seen. And personally, for me in this situation, I knew I had the rush at 705. There was no waiting on that. Yeah. I knew for a fact I had to go after him no matter what. Good shot in the Udes. 705 down. I took one big hit. And then the top section, these guys. Sharpshooter is still putting in the work. That um, IS-3-2. So this is actually one thing I would, I, I would actually call out for the community instead. If you see that you have players behind you that are handling this. And you kind of feel like you're stuck out. Because currently he's stuck out. Um, I actually don't see any other option for him. Because he's right now in view from here. This is all view. He could technically try and come right there. Let's actually take a look and see. Up oh, and go in the wrong direction. Thank you, replay system. Yeah, he could have he could have came back up without much of an issue and suppressed these guys, but then we have another one coming up from behind. Leopard one. Alright, I'll let this play out again. Lock on the me because we still have the 257. You're behind. IS-32. The sharpshooter just went down. It is down to a three-man. Yeah, he just dropped. See that? They all saw that. There you went. I don't know why he came over to try and help me. He should have. Mm -hmm. He should have locked down. If I'm being completely honest, he should have came. Yeah, and he just immediately, I don't know why he came out like that, because he just abandoned these guys. He should have came right here and tried to hold this position, because I'm clearly mm -hmm. focused on that by myself. And what is there? Is there three coming this this direction? Was it three? Yeah, there are three. Yeah, so you there got the Highlander, M103, Leopard, and then you're stuck sideways, and he just completely left you. Yep. Great teammate right there. Three. Ah, uh, dude, as soon as I saw him coming after me, and was he double tapping? Yeah. I think he was. And for me, I was just like, oh crap, this is <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> oh, looking at this, I was so uncomfortable. I was all like, I, I only got, what is it, 600 HP? We got a Highlander, M103, Leopard 1. And as soon as that Leopard 1 got unspotted, you see me look. I'm looking. I was all like, oh crap, he's coming up the hill. And then my first reaction right here. And I, I actually I I actually like this play here because don't get me wrong. This guy, not exactly the most uh the greatest teammate, but if you ever get stuck out in a situation like this, you always want to make sure you take this high ground inside here if this entire back section is clear. Just because this is a haul down position. Anyone that's coming back around that's trying to do a feedback, this is the superior position. Um, there is one more spot that if you can make it to it, you should try. But the secondary, this is primary, this is secondary in these two slots. If you feel like you're going to get pushed from uh, both directions and you have enough time, last position here. And you can play either here or you can move up and get hauled down right there. Uh, this position right here, this one's actually really awkward just because this little V inside, you always find yourself hafting the face a certain direction and you get stuck unless you're playing up in the top section. But the superior haul down position is right here. I also like that uh, section, that second part for the south spawn. If you're on the south side, you can take an IS-7 there and go hold down in that second position yeah. right off the start. And now, in this back section, here we go. Leopard's full health. I'm 600 HP. This is uncomfortable. 
Regal Dorn. We have a lot of. What's really nice is though is that we had support from mid firing inward for these guys that were getting aggressive on this outskirt. Um, this IS three should have been trying to rotate his armor, but then again, it's like you, you never know. He probably wasn't paying attention to like what's going to be coming up behind. 542 good hits he gets taken down and now i know that there's a crossfire going on from mid and then thinking about it taking my time to aim that shell i remember i was thinking because he got spotted and i was all like oh crap because i saw it on my map for half a second and i was like you know what it's a 1v1 you know the, the the one thing you want in a 1v1 is always to take the high ground point and then work on the high ground point because as you can see he's coming on the low ground He's not actually spotted right now. I have no idea, so I'm checking around the corner to make sure he's not coming. And since I don't see him right away, first reaction is, let's flip our tank and double check the backside just in case. And right here, you hear the spotting go off. Bring it up. Um, the Highlander, I tried to catch his tracks. I do think I tried to aim at his tracks just once. This is a good fight, though. And you know what? I'm actually going to bring this back a little bit. So I was looking at um, Andre the Giant with a ton of the new updates and all the buffs that this tank has received. If you guys still have your Andre the Giant, I am going to officially say this thing is an absolute monstrosity. Was that the lower armor? I think that was. You got a 30 millimeter gun shield if you're using that turret and that actually removes a weak spot. No, get get aggressive, get in close. Don't let him get the gun depression on you. One shell into the hatch, and then he gets finished off. I don't even know what was shooting him in the rear. Is it the Murat? I don't think it was the Murat. That was way too fast. Alrighty, well, that's about it for this replay. Um, the second one is tier 7. I actually want to go over the second one. So the second replay is an LMA. And this is... Uh, one that like whenever your map falls apart so like the the mid play then the right side falls you have to fall back really good positionings general took the top and general i kind of i i want to see what general does i wasn't here as you can see i'm still not moving and then as you can see i'm still i just barely started moving a minute and 10 seconds into the match um this little start off engagement not really super impressive came over i looked at the map and i immediately called out to blade in general that hey we need to fall back like immediately you see me immediately turn around right here and i was all like hey we got to go back now blade was already on the move and as soon as i called that out he was all like really i was like yep we gotta go there is no waiting on this up here in the top section all right let's do a little bit of a zoom out here let's pause for a moment let's take a look at the map so one thing about elemain is this back ridge along with that you have an inside ridge this entire section you can kind of isolate into its own little um defensive area and you can technically push it up a little bit if you can maintain here and then catch the back of hidden oasis but that takes a lot of work to maintain so three-man platoon um one guy working this entire top section if possible find a hold down position i do want to say there's one here there's one back here but if you if you're in this back section you don't have the uh, vision down here at least the vision you want you kind of have you're forced to take this uh farther position uh but while we're inside the replay system i guess what we can look at i'm just gonna hit play and let things kind of drag out a little bit is over here if you have to work this back section the one thing that makes it extremely easy to work this backside is just if you're stuck up here trying to play haul down by driving up and over, you're at a massive disadvantage every single time. What you want to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause this is you want to go ahead and you want to take it front of your tank here so you can drive up aiming downward. So since you're able to do that, you're capable of using this entire rock formation. If you got to go out farther to utilize better gun depression, you can come out a little bit farther. And then as you come over, you get shots all the way down range. At this point, it's not about 
you know, how much damage you're able to do. It's um, by simply stopping an entire rush. Not just that, you do have this slight right side that as however you choose to peek this, you have full control of how much of view is physically within the view of your tank coming around this corner right here. That way you're capable of like isolating targets that are trying to come up in the back part of Hidden Oasis. Uh, from this point of view, you can see the straight line coming straight down into the back of Hidden Oasis. So you have full control over that back section there from this position. Let's go ahead and jump over to me. This is um, one of the spots that is kind of hard to play on where I'm going to be sitting at for this match. Uh, where I should have originally posted and tried to get my hands on to be able to sit down would have been kind of like over here if possible, but we have no idea what's over on the right side. Um, we just know the left side's getting torn apart by this point in time. Going to go ahead and play. Putting out a couple of shots. The Tiger 2 was kind of my um, go-to for this one. So I put three shells into him. I put one shell into the Tiger. And then I do think by this point... I don't have a kill, but I, I kind of distributed my damage evenly among three targets. Yeah, there it is. There's the three target. Tiger, and then taking down the Tiger too. So that was a three target distribution to kind of help uh, get the HP down, rather than focus firing one target. But I saw the Tiger was being able to get taken down, and right there, you can see that this entire back section is completely covered. So, now let's take a look here. If you end up in a situation like this, and let's say that you see a three-man platoon that's kind of getting situated, here comes General BMOH. He's going to be pulling in the back section. I want to see what he does in the back section so I can ridicule him later. Um, but if you're seeing uh, your team line up like this on the map, whatever so slightly, how you see we got Blade up in the top section, we got me right here, we got a guy moving in, and it's kind of hard to tell this based upon like early game. Because all we have is this leftover heavy, which I think is the IS-6. And then the Cheeto, which I think is right here. And then, what is that, T-34-1? Like, if these if these two guys were capable of communicating with us, I would have rather had the 34-1 situate himself probably uh, in between these two rocks here. And then the IS-6 to either support snipe from this location, right here, and then play this back section to uh, assist the T-34 if possible, and then to be able to pull over here and get shots down range if needed. Then, if we know that this entire section is clear, then these two could have done this. The IS-6 could have came down, supported me inside this location, and the T-34 would have just easily rotated up into the top section here and hold that to assist Blade. But, you know, like, no one really uses game chat, and I'm not able to use game chat, so <laughs> that's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and play. I'm going to fast forward it a tad bit. All right, hold on. I want to back off this real fast. 30 seconds. Let's take a look here. Okay. Um, I'm going to give General some crap. I looked at my map and I thought he was... He didn't need to snipe there for as long as he did. And he was there for about 20 seconds. Which gave these guys a like it. Okay, right there. I'm in the front. I'm already situated. General's back here sniping. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is the first time I've ever asked him to, you know, do a play like this. But there is absolutely no point in sitting inside this back section early. You want to push up and take over inside there as quick as you possibly can. Because now that they are situating, now that they are taking over this section it's going to be a lot harder for him to make it down here without getting cross-fired in between this section. If he gets spotted, that is, which I don't I don't think he does, but we'll we'll see real fast. Right here he could have had a cross shot in the T32. I took down the T-32. The T-32 is full health as well. There we go. See, if he was here earlier, he would have been able to handle this. But as I was saying, this is not a bad spot to sit in. But as you can tell, it's not like the best haul down position because look at how much you're actually exposing over here. If he would have been further down, this is an easier peaking position from uh, this bottom section than this top right here.
And then I have six. He just full sent it out there. I have no idea why he full sent it out. We were situated. We had it locked down and we were just simply working on whatever we could send shells down to. As soon as the IS-6 got taken down, though, I had to fall back because this TD is coming up. I told General, don't worry about the TD. Pretend like he doesn't exist because if you pop out to shoot him, you're dead. Um, but yeah, this is about the lineup that should be done whenever you're looking at this map on defense, if possible. And then for anyone that's just randomly, you see this kind of um, cross set up here. Just know that the inside section here is one of the best plays that you can make guarding this back zone if you ever see a three-man platoon handling these positions like this you're better off trying to support this back zone and it's not going to matter how much damage you do because you're outnumbered by this point um, another spot is you could assist from the back right there as well because i do believe from this position you can technically get cross shots up on the top section there i'm not 100 percent sure about that but i'm going to take a look oh yeah you can you can get some crossfire but they have to be on top of the hill Super Hellcat pulling up. That reminds me. It looks, looks like... A, yeah, it's AFK VK. Now I'm throwing shells down towards Blade to try and help. There was one shell that I threw out that actually physically went through the Super Hellcat whenever I was watching it. And then... He drove off. Strumpons are pulling up. T28 prototype pulling up. I... I have no idea if these are the last three. I did get a little bit overly aggressive here. And General should have been um, trying to peek and spot. Never mind. General's actually completely fine because T28 and Kyrie. And then the Tiger pulling up. My goal was to take down the Tiger. I didn't realize there was a Strum Pounds coming up behind me. He completely missed it, though. Fast forward. I get taken down by the uh, Kyrie that was on top of the hill. But, yeah, if we would have been able to hold with that three-lane position, because the T-34 kind of threw it away, and then the, uh, you know, the IS-6 threw it away. And it's like, I'm not going to call these guys out. You know, he did what he could, and then he did what he could as well. So that's really all that matters. But that's why I want to go over these replays and show this off. Because now that he's last man standing, you know, it's like it's already clean up and there's nothing he can really do. There is a lot of like low health tanks. By the way, <laughs> I gave him some crap. If you look, his gun's yellow. Everything else is broken, but his gun's literally broken. So let's rewind that. Watch this. I gave him so much crap. Because watch like he's uh he's aiming at it, okay? And I laughed so hard because look at how far off the shell was <laughs> compared to the tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh like that was my and even the server caught it, so that's that's hilarious. I was laughing at that. But no, this map, um I wanted to say this is a bad match. Like this this it's a really good learning experience for people. Because this is a map that you can make work really well. And then Clone Guy did a recording on my replay that I had in this map uh, inside my VK, 4502A. And that was a really good replay. Just because 8,000 damage up against tier 10. Don't get me wrong, I, I felt like that match was really, really weird. Anyways, um, you know, like anybody that's watching the video, watching this little VOD review, I hope you guys learned something on those maps. <laughs> I don't know about the Sand River one that was kind of going over just a little bit of an encounter. But the Ella main, there's a lot of defensive positions on that side. And that's just one of the setups I normally do whenever we get stuck. The best part is you can actually reverse it. So it works going both directions. If the enemies are pulling in from the north rather than the south, those positions still work the same exact way. But the position that I'm in is capable of defending where Blade was located. So you can actually that that's actually a dual split line that can easily shuffle between one side to the other it's one of the only ones on any of the maps that's actually capable of working both ways anyways till next time i'm, I'm gonna go play with uh deathstroke